Thanks. And our leader is with Christian in studio. Irina, you came to the studio yesterday and we were discussing your head-to-head -head that you were behind 0-2 and you said, I have the chance to improve that score. Mm -hmm. And you came today with such an aggressive stance, you played the delayed Benoni and you got what you wanted. How do you feel right now? Yeah, I feel really good. I mean, obviously that's, uh, that's the result I was aiming for today. I mean, it's hard to understate, uh, it's hard to overstate the importance uh, of this game. You know, when you're half a point behind, there's only two rounds left. And, um, you know, what I've learned over the years, uh, I think I kind of alluded to that yesterday, is that you can't expect anyone else to do your work for you. You know, if you want to win the tournament and you have a head-to-head -head battle, like, you have to take your chances there because hoping that your opponent, like someone else, will get a draw off of them or slow them down, um, yeah, that's, not, that's not productive, right? So I kind of came in trying to, uh, to do this myself today, and, yeah, my opening... Um, I think was, uh, was, was good for the moment. <laughs> it was indeed. And you got into a very nice position after she decided to take on E6 and change the structure. Were you still familiar with this position? Yeah, I was familiar with this position, but after bishop E2, like, this is where I had like a 15 minute think mm -hmm. after uh, knight C6 castles, my first think of the game. And actually I was pretty happy with what I came up with, just like, um, you know, simple developing move B6. So you just have to kind of figure out how you want your pieces to be. Overall, this game, I mean, yeah, it, it was definitely always um, like black in black's favor. Um, but there were some moments, of course, that made it like technically tricky to win. We can keep going. What were the strategical details mm -hmm. that you were aiming for in this position? Yeah, I mean, well, here's the thing. I mean, I got everything in with like bonus tempos in this game because I got to put, I mean, 91 certainly cannot be, you know, the way to play this position. Indeed, um, yes. You know, I got to have my knight on d4, then white spent another tempo with the bishop on d3. So there were two tempos to get the knight to c2, where it's not even clear what it does differently from f3. Mm -hmm. um, and then bishop e2 to d3. So basically, I just got a, you know, fantastic position. And um, I had time to put my pieces on all their best squares and start the play on the king side. <clears throat> and here, yeah, I mean, e5, um, I don't know, I decided that it was time for this move. I was looking at things like knight b8 to c6 here as well. Like, I don't know, I thought maybe I should try to bring another knight to d4. But, you know, ultimately why I went for e5 was because I wanted to play against the light squared bishop. Um, f5, yeah, I see the computer showing this move. You know, honestly, I didn't even think this was tactically possible. It kind of looks like it just gives away a pawn, and right? It probably is giving away a pawn. So yeah. the computer goes from like 0, 0 to like 0 0.6. It's and a very hard move nature. to play. I mean, I would say almost impossible for yeah. white to like, you know, figure out now is the time for me to go f5. I mean, knight d5 is a very natural move by white. And you also have such nice support of uh, the knight on d4 with the pawn still on c5 and e5. Yeah, so she went for this position, which is kind of what I was expecting. So I took. And here, I really thought like I was close to winning. And um, it's, I felt like it was a little uh, unfair that she had this amazing G3 trick, oh, you know, a couple yes. of moves down. I mean, come on, like, you know, you think that she just, you know, blunders, right, rook f4. And then to figure out that she has G3, I mean, wow. That's like, I mean, I did not see G3. And thank God that I, you know, thought for a little bit before so taking that bishop. So this was what you mi missed when Yeah, you yeah, I did not see that there was g3. Like when I was calculating all of this and I decided, I mean, I already kind of thought I was winning because if she goes bishop e3 instead of uh, king h1, then I just put her in a pin with rook e8 and, you know, she can't really get out of it. Yeah, like here there's just too much, queen f6, queen h4. Yeah. So her, you know, um, so the, the pin wins, but so the fact that you can go king h1 and leave the back rank open and then you just take a bishop and she just goes g3, <laughs> it's a kind of unusual idea, I have to say, right? Yeah, like it it's, it's definitely possible to miss that from a distance. So once I miss that, okay, I mean, white, uh, black is still better, but obviously you're not going to win the game right away. So I decided to keep on playing, you know, on these dark squares. Um, yeah, I mean, I... How do you regroup mm -hmm. yourself mentally at that point? Well, you know, it's fine. I mean, yeah, there's g3. It's a trick. Uh, you got to keep going. I mean, you're still better. You still got the dark squares. The b2 pawn is falling. The bishop on c2 is not great. Um, but it really became like a technical thing, right? Which, of course, you know, was not my plan uh, from the outset. And I think, you know, she, she played uh, quite well. Interesting decision to go queen e2 and sack the pawn. Like right here, queen e2 was not a very obvious move, right? That she, I mean, I thought, okay, 
I was expecting maybe bishop takes e5, but I think probably her decision is the right one, yeah. It is indeed. Yeah, yeah. this was a quite a good practical choice by her, because the problem is for me to win this position, I got to get rid of the dark squared bishop. Yeah, if I can trade, then it's over, but the bishop in f4 is such a strong defender, and it just wasn't, uh, it wasn't so easy at all. And it felt like she was getting her initiative as well going on the king's side. Yeah, I mean, it's like she can't do so much, I mean, unless I really decide to go overboard, but... This move, rookie eight, I mean, I guess, I mean, uh, whoa. <laughs> whoa, I did not expect such an evaluation. Rookie eight, I mean, I'm trying to keep the rooks on the board. So here, h5. Yeah, h5. Was... Wow, well, I definitely didn't think I was, you know, going to be ever in trouble in this position. Um, but yeah, of course, this h5 idea, I was seeing it. In fact, you know, like a move, like even before, you know, like if she goes, in fact, right before uh, queen f3, I was looking at h5 here, but the difference is now I take with the rook, and then I get to play queen f3, queen e7 just in time, and then I'm actually good, right? So I was seeing these ideas, but yeah, queen f3, of course, is stronger because she makes me take with my bishop, and the e-file is closed, and then she goes h5. Wow. Checkmate going on if you take with the rook, so you yeah. take with the bishop. And That's amazing, though. I mean, to think that black could be worse here, like, from what? Well, like, I mean, even if... Queen G7? Maybe what? You have to go for the exchanges, like rook F3. Yeah, what was wrong with like Queen G7? I mean, I oh, is, it, is there F7, H6, H6 maybe? No, I think no, Queen just G4, take, just simple. I just like that. I just invade Which on the light square. It's amazing, and her bishop actually comes into the game. Yeah, just take, yeah. just F7. Mm. I mean, I, it, it, was, it was technically difficult, this part. Like, I just felt like, of course, I wasn't expecting to be worse, like, in this line, and I mean, I tried. The problem is, if I allowed the rook trade, like, a, uh, if we go back to the rook trade, and like, let's say I would have just played uh, bishop takes e5 instead of rook e8. Okay. Yeah, like, I mean, I just th thought that this, you know, yeah, very close to was equality. very close right. to equality. Like, because the truth is the b-pawn is irrelevant, and she's going to be playing on the king side with h5. Like, why should she lose this position? She's not. Yeah, yeah. This one seems very simplified. Yeah. And you decided to keep, but that... Then this yeah. move came on the You know, board. I saw these ideas. I had to check for that because actually one last thing. Can we go back for sure. one second? Because in this position when the queen was on e2, mm -hmm. I also had to check the move queen d1. You know, just in case, right? Because I, now I can't take with the bishop. But again, now I can take with the rook and I survive, right? So like I was definitely aware of these ideas. And I mean, yeah, she just forgot that the queen on the diagonal was still protecting the rook, right? So you think it was just a blunder? Yeah. Oh yeah, she How just. She, she I think when, she just. When, she just didn't. Happened. Um, you know, she kind of thought she was pulling the queen away, and queen f7 wins the rook or something, and then she just forgot that the queen is on the same diagonal. Did she realize when she made the move, or after she made the move? I'm, you know, I honestly didn't like look at her facial expressions too much at that point. I mean, I knew that it was a blunder, and that the queen was holding the rook. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think she realized it pretty pretty quickly. And of course, after that, there's no way she gets to your uh, Yeah, I, my bishop is so nice now. It's like defending everything so well. And you converted nicely. Irina, congratulations. Uh, good spot for you. You're going yeah. into the last round with half a point lead, but yeah. two competitors playing against each other. Mm -hmm. Potential uh, to uh, score a victory in that one. How are you going to approach tomorrow's game against one of your good friends and rivals, yeah. Anna Zatansky. Anna. Anna. Right. We, you know, it's funny because I'm playing three U.S. women's champions in a row, Yeah. actually, right? <laughs> I, just, I realized that. We've got Nazi, Jennifer, and now Anna. And wow, I see I've played a lot of games against <laughs> Anna over the years. Um, and this is only classical games. Yeah, classical, right. So, oh. um, well, I feel good. I mean, you know, you, you, in the tournament, you got to do your job, right? That's the first thing. So. Um, that's what I'm going to do tomorrow again, you know, just do my job with the white pieces, try to play good chess, and uh, try to close things out. Guys, any questions for Congratulations, Irina. Yes. That was really quite the tumultuous game and uh, something we expected. We expected uh, fireworks and uh, it delivered. So good luck tomorrow, Irina.